From the studios in the Ram Cave, in the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Terosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for May the 11th, 2023. Uh, as always, we are here, do a scripture application, pray for our young people, and get you out of here. This is our 63rd episode of a ministry without parole since we've been coming on in the mornings. Today, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 2 verses one through four. I gave you a bit of a background on Hebrews yesterday in terms of all the different uh, theories of who wrote <clears throat> who wrote um, the, uh, the letter or the book. Um, you know, people used to think it was Paul. They've kind of moved off of Paul. Some think Barnabas, some think Apollos, uh, some think Priscilla and Aquila. I just read that one. I did not know Priscilla and Aquila were in the mix, but I thought that was an interesting one. Either way, we do not know. But we do know it was written before the fall of Jerusalem, so mid-60s, 1st AD, uh, 1st century AD, maybe earlier than mid-60s. Uh, in fact, um, I'm of the belief that all the New Testament was written prior to 70 AD, but we can get into that later. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, we'll read it and we will uh, advance. Dee Dee and Kelly... Thank you so much for clicking on, and uh, we will be praying for you guys at the end of this message. Uh, for those that are watching um, this later on, uh, Dee Dee and Kelly, I think, are getting married tomorrow, and so let's wish them a great, great day and, uh, and a better tomorrow. So uh, thank you guys for clicking on and always encouraging me. Uh, so here we go. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And we don't know who wrote it, but they're writing it to Jewish believers uh, early on, uh, encouraging them. And it starts in the first verse of chapter 2. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. I love this. This is a, a really good passage, and I think I do. I do have it underlined in my Bible. Um, really, um, there's a lot of stuff to dive into here. I don't want to get too deep into message spoken by angels. There is no conflict here. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, the, the low-hanging fruit crowd. Now, when I mean the low-hanging fruit crowd are casual believers who are looking for a way out, are former believers who are trying to get you to join them out, and people who have never believed at all that are so afraid of a God they don't believe in, they say that doesn't exist, that they'll always reach for the low-hanging fruit and say, well, was it angels or Jesus? You know, who was this guy, right? Uh, I, I'm just going to assure you, since you've been with me through 63 episodes of, of this, and I, I've been preaching at least Burbank for 23 years and online for four years for most of you, there is no conflict here um, with Jesus. Uh, remember the bottom line, besides angels not having wings, uh, the word angel, angelos in Greek, that's where you get angelus, that's the city of angels, Los Angeles, angelos in Greek. Malach in Hebrew means messenger. It's a job description. And there's a lot of ways to kind of break that down, but it is the message of Jesus Christ. In fact, the writer goes on uh, to say, this salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. And uh, that kind of makes you curious in terms of who the author is. Somebody Somebody had to be present and hear uh, the, the hear Jesus speak that is sharing this. And uh, I don't want to get into this whole caught up that it wasn't Jesus' message. It was spirits that brought it and all this kind of stuff. Um, messenger, uh, Malak, uh, uh, Angelus, they're all angels and they are their job description is messenger. This is the message of Jesus Christ. So I'm um, happy to break that down even more in a side message or or over you buying me lunch. I'm really happy to do that. Um, so, uh, here we go. Uh, 
let's keep it simple right now and keep it tight. And let's focus on the key part of this passage. And that's the departure from the Christian life. And departure from the Christian life is a slipping away. It's not a sudden departure. It's not like I went to church on Sunday, message was bad, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back, I don't believe in God anymore, right? No, no, no. What happens is, and what the writer of Hebrews is saying is, is we drift away. It comes in a distancing of ourselves from the Lord. We don't like to attend church because that means we'll be around other believers. Other believers do reflect the Lord and it shines a light on the present disposition of our lives. And we would prefer not to think about it. Sometimes there's always the person that's, oh, woe is me. They're the Pharisee on the corner. And then there's always somebody that, you know, in, in, in the face of everything being miserable, just marches forward in God. And that's a bright light. And maybe that, you know, intimidates us. And we don't want to be intimidated that way. So uh, that that's one way. We, we kind of drift away from church. We get busy, right? Um, we distance ourselves also uh, from proximity to God via prayer because it's not pleasant to review the things we do, not the mistakes or imperfections in our lives because we are not going to be perfect and God understands that. And um, if your pastor's not sharing with you that you're not going to be perfect, you probably don't have a good pastor because that pastor himself, this pastor, is not perfect. Um but uh, we don't like necessarily to, to review the, the choices we make for our benefit, pleasure, uh, and uh, mostly whether we recognize it or not, choices done for our glory to bring attention to ourselves. And uh, I know when I'm in prayer with God and I'm actually turned everything off around me and I've gotten by myself, that's when the Lord says, Joe, what are you doing? What are you doing? And uh, he calls me on the carpet. I know his spirit's calling me on the carpet. And... Uh, and we don't want to do that, right? So we distance ourselves from God uh, via prayer. We don't do it, all right? Thirdly, we distance ourselves from the word of God because there's little arguing with the black and white of the biblical text. So we either look for ways, leaders, or methods to diminish its impact, or we begin to ignore it altogether. And again, all this stuff doesn't happen right with Hiroshima type explosion. This is a slow, gradual ebbing away. Maybe there's a catalyst where um, something unfair happened to you, a loved one that you really cared about. You prayed for them to be healed and it didn't work. And because you've lost proximity to God, because the scripture uh, no longer has authority in your life, because you separated yourselves from believers, that catalyst of a lost loved one or a loved one suffering, that is where the enemy uses that as fuel to pull you further and further and further away from God. This is a slow, gradual ebbing away. The scripture says, don't drift away. And it happens until we come to a point where we are completely cut off uh, from the power, grace, and love of God, as well as faith in him. And it's that faith in him that allows us to endure the 1960s when everyone's getting assassinated and there's riots and there's drug abuse and they're rioting the streets. That faith in him is what allows us to survive the COVID period, uh, all the unrest. Uh, it allows us to survive our miserable, awful, functioning leaders uh, in the world and not put our, uh, and, 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 uh, and we put our faith in God instead of our, our leaders or our governments or our systems or our programs. Heck, I'll even say, even in our overwhelming, uh, overwhelming view of uh, our denominations, we don't put all of our faith in them. Uh, we, we put our faith in God. But when we're slowly moving away from God, we lose that power, we lose that grace, we, 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 we don't understand that love anymore he has for us, and then we lose faith in him, and then we lose hope. We lose all hope. So the writer here in Hebrews is basically saying, you've accepted Christ, don't drift away. I know it's a new system, it's a new thing for you to, to have this personal relationship with the Savior. Don't drift away, guard yourselves. Pay extra attention to what you've heard and what you've been taught. And, and that goes back to why we read our scriptures and why we pray every single day. It keeps us grounded. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we take communion first Sunday of every month at Burbank Faith. Some churches take it every week. <clears throat> but um, Nazarene Church I grew up in, we took it four times a year. But uh, 
The reason we take communion is to remember that we're not there because Pastor Joe can preach or Pastor Bill can play or there's a cool softball team where we could just hang out with some good people and talk NASCAR and football and, um, you know, decorate things, right? No, no, we meet because we remember the message that was implanted to us and it keeps us from drifting away. And when we do the cracker and juice, it reminds us of who died for us, right? For this message, as the scripture says, is binding. It is true. Not just the difficult stuff, the scary stuff, or the unpleasant stuff, but the victory, the power, the eternal of it is all true. Every good thing there is to have in Christ Jesus our Lord is available to us. And we need to remember this. And we need to draw ourselves always back to him. When we're struggling, we just keep doing the fundamentals, right? Uh, we keep going forward. Uh, as some of you know, I've, um, I've written about seven books and, uh, uh, I've, uh, I've had various success with them, not, not great success at any stretch, but some success. And, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of days you sit down to write and it's awful. It's terrible. And you think this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. This is the stupidest waste of time I've ever done. And then you go back and you read what you wrote when you were feeling miserable and you realize some of that stuff's the best stuff you've ever written because there was no emotion tied to it. You just kept plugging away. One, one, one infamous writer once said that 80% of life is just showing up. And, uh, and I can say that uh, in, in, in my professional life, but also in my spiritual life. Let's just show up. Let's just be present. Let's just be present with God. And, uh, and even when it's difficult, even when it's unpleasant, and understand that he is the strength of our life and that he is the power and that he is the one that gets all the glory and that he is eternal and that every good thing Every good thing is out there in Christ Jesus for us to have. And that's what we pray for. And that's why we pray for our young people every single day. Every single day we pray for our young people as they go into those secular, hostile places. Uh, we pray for them that the, the Lord of hosts goes before them and wipes out the spiritual armies aligned against them and us. That the influence of the spiritual realm into our realm is diminished that those who teach and those who work in, in, in police departments and our soldiers and, and those good people who do work in the halls of government, we do pray that they would have courage each and every day and that they would not drift away, but instead would uh, remember that this message of the gospel is binding. It is true. It is eternal. It is always there. And we don't, we don't give up what we've been taught and what we've learned and what we've experienced in the Lord. Amen. That's why we pray for our young people, and that's why we're praying for our young people uh, today. And all those folks we mentioned, police officers, soldiers, uh, teachers, uh, and people who work in government, uh, we pray for them. We also are going to pray for Dee Dee and Kelly, who will be married tomorrow at 3 p.m. Congratulations, you guys. Uh, very happy for you. Um, I know it's been a journey, likely for both of you. Uh, but, you know, there's that song we used to sing called, I've Waited for the Lord on High. I've waited, and he heard my cry. And uh, I think uh, the Lord is using each other, each of you, to uh, fulfill the longing in each one of your hearts. And so I'm very happy for both of you. Um, let's also continue to pray for Piper Morris and her son, Grayson. Megan Meeks, my student with the, former student with the liver and kidney issues. Jimmy Maldonado and his brother, Ronnie. Uh, uh, Jimmy was our point guard in high school. We pray for Jimmy and his brother, Ronnie, recovering from a couple of strokes. Darlene Carroll and the great, great Northwest. We pray for her, her friend, Kathy Duncan who's on track for surgery May 19th. We pray for her, their mutual friend, Ralph, battling COPD. We pray for Harold Perry as he preps next week for his wife's going home service. She graduated, Joyce graduated to be with the Lord yesterday. Let's continue to pray for Harold Perry this week. Also, those battling cancer or the treatment of cancer, Tim Burns, uh, Tammy, uh, Tammy monk Vashel, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, who I'm gonna move off this list next week, uh, she finished her radiation treatment, and as of right now, she is cancer-free. Uh, so that's awesome. Rachel Gilbert, who is in her 25 days of radiation, we're going to continue to pray for her. Colby Van Dyke and Emmanuel, who are all battling cancer. Vision Paradise, our Spanish-language church, uh, with Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, and Edgar and the gang. We pray for them, our future Armenian ministry. This Sunday service, we pray it's an awesome service this Sunday. We pray for our board members and our leaders. 
Uh, we pray that we're good stewards and we're thankful for your faithfulness. And uh, we also pray for Granite Ridge Home Camp as the, the wheel in the sky keeps turning and we get closer and closer to CIT Academy, Kids Camp, and of course, uh, Youth Camp. Uh, in, the, in the comment box below, you've seen it. I post it there every day. Please, please uh, click on uh, the link no one's going to ask you for personal information. No one's going to ask you to, to for anything other than we have 15-minute slots, four 15-minute slots for every hour. So we have 360 slots that we need to cover for 90 hours of prayer so that we can have our kids camp July 17th to the 21st covered in prayer. Um, please join us in that. Uh, we have at every kids camp since 2018 has had every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day, covered in prayer. It is an encouragement and obviously it's an effect as we keep it present before the Lord. Um, so we got all that out. All right, let's pray and uh, then we'll get you out of here. Lord, we, um, <clears throat> we do ask for our young people today. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you are doing battle in the spiritual realms, Lord, and that the influence is not being put there or uh, de-emphasized and that, Lord, our students are having a breath of fresh discernment in their lives that uh, the oppression, uh, the oppressive nature of some of these institutions they're in, Lord, of many of them um, is, uh, is taken away and they could recognize the truth that is to be found in you. Let those who work in these places, teachers and other places that are secularly hostile, Lord, our, uh, our, our, um, our, our police officers, our soldiers, our, those who work in, in uh, government, Lord, uh, let, let that... Um, message come through them lord let them share truthfully and boldly and lord uh let lives uh, be reaffirmed in you if not changed altogether so we pray for our young people today lord we pray for kelly and Dee Dee as they get married tomorrow lord let it be a blessed day let it be an awesome day um and let it be an awesome life together draw them closer to each other by drawing them closer to you we pray for piper morris and her son grayson we pray for megan meeks we pray for jimmy and ronnie maldonado we pray for Darlene Carroll and Kathy Duncan. We pray for Ralph. We pray for Harold Perry and, uh, and what he's feeling these days, Lord, and there's so many emotions. We pray for the service next week for his wife, Joyce. Encourage the Perry family. We do pray for Tim Burns, Tammy, Bill, Becky, Rachel, Colby, and Emmanuel, and all those battling cancer. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon them and Vision Paradise and Pastor, uh, Pastor Walter, uh, Pastor Francis, and Edgar. Lord, we uh, do pray for them. Uh, Lord, we pray for Burbank Faith, that we are good stewards of our generation, Lord. And we pray for our leaders. And we pray for this Sunday service, Lord, that something truly, truly um, beyond ordinary happens, but extraordinary, not by my hand uh, or, or Pastor Bill's hand, but by your hand, Lord. And then we also pray for Home Camp Granite Ridge. We pray for Shay, Tracy, Zach, the whole staff there at Granite Ridge, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you give us a special summer, a unique summer, an amazing summer, of lives, again, being reaffirmed in you and changed in you. So we pray for CIT, Kids Camp, and of course, Youth Camp. Lord, give us a blessed day today, a victorious day, and find us faithful in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, cool. Outstanding. Uh, we are at the 18-minute mark, so I'm going to get you out of here. Uh, have a great day. Kelly and Didi, make sure you send pictures. All right. God bless. We will talk to you soon.